super creative Kiro from Kiro's workshop is the creator and host of today's collaboration, which is called the Astral Chimera Conceptual Collaboration. This collab had an open invitation, which meant anyone could participate. The genius idea behind this collab was to combine three different astral charts, the Western, the Mayan and the Chinese. My birthday is the 27th of July and my birth year is 1994. So that makes me a Leo or a lion in Western, a bat in Mayan and a dog in Chinese. This is the astral part of the collab. The second word in the name Chimera comes from Greek mythology and it is used to describe a monster that is constructed from multiple parts of different animals. For the base of this doll I chose this create a monster cat doll. Creator Monster dolls are coming my favorite to customize because of how convenient it is to remove the limbs and the head. I thought her cat-like face sculpt would work really well for the lion sign. There is no hair removal this time, so all I have to do is remove her factory face with pure acetone and some q-tips. I know I want to add a bat-like nose and ears, so I will be shrinking the head. I also love the look of shrunken heads and my mermaid, fawn and reindeer dolls already have shrunken heads. And I want my fantasy creature squad to match. To shrink vinyl heads, I use a glass container with a tight lid and 100% acetone. This method is called fast shrinking. The head will remain in the acetone for two hours and then it will be slightly stuffed with cotton pads and left out to dry. When the acetone evaporates, the head will shrink and also harden. This is great because then I don't need to worry about my modifications falling off because of the flexible nature of the vinyl. I will be giving her a completely new lower part, so I whack her in half with my Dremel tool. I don't like her posed fingers, but I can't just swap them out because the joints are a different size. One of my LOL dolls came with a broken hand and that gave me an idea to cut out the connecting piece at the wrist. The hand stays in place regardless of the slit we had to make to remove the wrist peg. You just need to be delicate when you remove the hand and really pinch it at the connection point while you're pulling it out. I will be constructing a new lower body for her, art doll style, like KP Creations art dolls and most recently Delightful's Tamara Tiny Hoof doll. I was already working on this doll's concept when Catherine posted her video and I was like, darn it, she beat me to it. But hey, this is a really fun technique and it is surprisingly simple. So if you have been thinking about giving it a go, I highly recommend it. It was very fun and I will be doing this again. There are so many videos on KP Creations channel with plenty of information about this technique. But the first step is to create a armature or the skeleton of your creature. I used aluminium wire because it's easy to bend and that will give the finished doll great posability. I fixed the end of the spine to the doll's torso with hot glue. Here is the finished armature. A handy trick is to search pictures of animal skeletons. For my doll I used pictures of German shepherds and images of their skeletons. 
I thought the German Shepherd would be a good dog breed because it is easily recognizable and the correct size to mesh well with the larger lion parts of the doll, instead of choosing like a Chihuahua. I really did get lucky with the animals I got. They are different enough to create a nice variety, but not so different that they would look too strange together. After connecting all the limbs to the spine with wire and blobs of hot glue, I started to work on the paws. Ah, the paws! I knew this was going to be the most difficult part and I had already made peace with the fact that they were not going to be symmetrical. You probably know the saying regards to eyebrows being sisters and not twins, and when they are really bad, they are distant cousins. Well, my paws are not even related. And the fact that my magic scope is getting a little too old did not help the situation at all. It was really difficult to mix and it started to harden way faster than normal. I wish I could have just 3D printed for perfect pause with minimal headache, but I still don't know how to use a digital sculpting program, so clay was my only option. I also forget to make the claws in advance, so the front paws are really janky looking. The back paws turned out a lot better, which is a shame because the front ones are the ones you are looking at most of the time. I reinforced the connections with super glue and then painted on a layer of black as an even base. On a trip to see my sister, I was able to visit in person the craft store I order my MSC from. And I didn't know that they sell folk art paints. And I have been waiting to try them out for so long, because Hexgen and Ace of Clay use this brand. And I really like it. The matte finish is my favorite part, and it has great coverage and pigmentation. I finished off the paint job on the paws and I used up the rest of the paint on the arms and torso. If the wire is the skeleton of the creature, then this part is the meat, so to speak. KP Creations uses quilt batting that she cuts into strips. I needed some regular stuffing for a different project, so I used that for this as well. I twist the stuffing a bit to make it easier to control and to add the correct amount of volume to each area. Keep in mind the fabric you are going to use to cover the body. If you use a thicker fabric like fake fur like I am, it will add a lot of thickness especially when working with a smaller scale like this. This is where I decided to go about doing things a little differently. I don't have an airbrush to create those lovely looking gradients and variations in tone to the fake fur. That is going to be the final layer or the skin of the creature. So instead I need to create the variations by using different fabrics. So, that's why I need to have a more precise plan for the seams and different shapes. To create my patterns, I use cling film and masking tape. I draw out my seams and cut along them to create the rough draft. I transfer that to paper to better clean up and make sure it's symmetrical. At first I used four different fake furs, but ended up recutting the back legs because we will need to trim back the fur quite a bit at the legs, and that would reveal a completely different color. 
I trim the fur at the edges to make it easier for me to join the pieces. I start the assembly by sewing all the darts. Then I start joining the pieces together. Now that all the seams that I can do are done, we can start putting it on the doll. I completely forgot that the legs need to be sewn directly on the doll because of the sculpted paws. So ignore that part, I seam rip them off camera. Rest of the sewing I did by hand and it was really fun. I used a ladder stitch for a nice finish, not that you need it, the fur completely covers your stitching. Using different fabrics helps to create some of the distinctive features of the different animals, like the dark brown back of the German Shepherd and the fluffy mane of the lion. I went with a male lion as the inspiration because it's more recognizable as a lion, and who cares about gender anyway? We are making a fantasy creature over here. Then it was the messy process of trimming down the fur. I don't have a pet shaver, but I might invest in one if I in the future want to make more of dolls like this. But for now, a sharp pair of scissors will do the job just fine. I use my pet brush to brush the fur while I cut it to catch all the hairs I need to trim. Now that her body is looking nice and almost done, I can pop her dried out head back into its place. I protect her fur with fabric because I don't want to mess it up while doing the next steps. Before I can give her a new face, I need to sculpt her bat nose and ears. I'm using my two-part magic sculpt for this. I mixed too much of it, thinking I can do the ears and nose at the same time, but because it's so old, it started to turn hard on me while I was still working on the nose. I had some reference pictures of bat noses, but in the end decided to create my own version. I also filled the hole on her head where I removed the plastic cap before I shrunk her head in acetone. I really had to speed through the ears because the clay was getting very difficult to sculpt and I even had to add the ridges layer on top, so they are a little lumpy. I sanded the ears and painted them pink on the inside and brown on the outside. The nose gets a pink treatment too. I spray her with MSC off camera before I started adding blushing to her cheeks, nose, ears, chest and arms. I love working with pastels, it's my favorite step in doing the doll's face. Lions have a dark rim around their eyes, so I decided to bring that in for my doll. I added some fun hair strokes all around her face. The pink skin tone was really lovely and I liked it, so that's why I left some parts of her face pink. I add white to the whole area of the eye to create a blank base for adding the irises later on. 
I added some color to her lips and then it was time to add the second coat of sealant. I use a dark orange pencil to create the outline and shadow of her pupils. A lighter orange and some pink in the tear duct and waterline will start to make the face come to life. She is a wild monster that lives in the woods, so she needs to have bushy, wild brows. My only regret is that I didn't make them even wilder. It would have been a fun look to have really crazy eyebrows. After the eyebrows, I sealed her face the third time. I really like the look of rosy cheeks and skin that looks textured on dolls. So I blob on some red watercolor and wipe most of it off with a Q-tip. I added the bottom lashes with brown and top lashes with black pencil. To really push the monster feel, I used white acrylic to paint on her fangs. I added some shading to them as well, to sell the illusion better. I wanted her face to look really sweet, so that's why I went with really large pupils this time. I think it creates a fun contradictory with her monster features. I apply the fourth coat of sealant to her face. After the finishing touches like the eye shines, the face up is nearly complete. We need one more coat of Mr. Super Clear Spray. This time I add a gloss varnish to her teeth and eyes and skip the lips for a more natural finish. The tail is not quite the right color, so I took a risk and decided to paint it with watered down acrylic paint. I used my pet brush to vigorously comb out the paint while it was drying to make sure the finish was not too crunchy. There is a slight difference in texture, but it really isn't that bad. I noticed that the darkest fur that feels almost silky to the touch did not like the paint. It clumped up horribly, but the light colored one that felt more fluffy and soft did much better. So do pay attention to the different furs at the fabric store and stay away from the silky, sleek feeling ones. I glued down the edges of the fur to the torso and also to the sculpted paws. Let's give her some hair. I digged around in my yarn basket and pulled out these colors. Later on, I added a dark brown to the mix to give it some more contrast. This technique is very popular, so I assume you have seen it plenty of times in multiple videos. So let's speed through it, shall we? Okay, now that we have some yarn wefts, I can start gluing them down to her bald head. At this point, I had a plan of giving her a massive lion mane type of hair, but because of her front paws and the chest area is already the mane of the lion, it looked really strange having the mane come all the way up to her head. And it was just too much of the same color and too much of the same fur. So that is why I decided to add a dark brown yarn right at the hairline. I think it provides a nice break from the lighter colors and also ties in with the dark spot on her back. Thank you. 
I was really unsure of how to style her hair. But in the end, I mustered the courage to cut it shorter. And I love it now, it's so cute, but still wild looking. I ended up leaving a longer tufts of hair on either side of her head. I think it just looked interesting and kind of kooky. Right from the beginning, I knew I had to make bat wings for her. I tested out my idea of making the wings out of liquid latex first on a small test piece. Unfortunately, the latex was old and it had dried up and formed a clog, and I used too much force to get it out and it spilled everywhere. On the desk, on my phone, it was a huge mess. Luckily, it did peel right off from my phone and my table. For stability, I used some beige gauze and then I slathered it with the latex. Liquid latex is really a fun material, but it does have some drawbacks. First, it smells very foul. Second, it sticks to absolutely everything, especially to itself. So, you can use a brush to apply it because it would stick to the bristles and ruin the brush. So, I'm using a palette knife instead. Later on, I switched to using a plastic spatula for some reason, but they both work fine. I leave the mess out to dry and once it's dry, I apply a general coat of pastels. This will color the latex and also prevent it from sticking to itself and collecting lint and dust. My test piece was a success, so now I can move on to planning the skeleton of the wing. I draw a shape of the wing so that I can have something to follow and to make sure both of the wings will look relatively similar in the end. I use more of the aluminium wire to create the armature of the wing. I cover the wire with what is called flora tape. It's used in floristry. It will protect the wire from rusting and reacting with the latex. I've had wire rust really bad when in contact with the latex. Although I was not using aluminium when that happened, but it has another handy property as well. It will make the wires way less slippery. The tape has this really sticky finish to it, so it will stick to itself and hopefully to the latex as well. I checked that you can purchase this on Amazon, and I think a craft store that sells fake flowers will carry it as well. There is a plenty of different colors available for professionals, but for consumers it might be harder to find other colors than green, unless if you buy like a multi-pack. FYI, I do work as a florist in my day job, so that is how I have come across it myself. I added some stuffing to the upper arms so that they wouldn't be as skinny. I cut four layers of the mesh fabric and then I coat them with the liquid latex. You need to be pretty fast and you can't finesse it too long because as soon as it starts drying, it will begin to granulate or pill if you are still moving it around. I kind of have to accept that the finish is going to be a little lumpy at places. I coat only one side of it with pastels and then I turn it over. Place the skeleton in place. Lay another piece of the fabric on top and do a second coat of the latex. A bat wing sandwich. Bon appetit. You do need to be very generous with the latex. I applied a slightly less to the first one and it was difficult getting it to spread nicely over the wing. That's why it has more texture to it than the other one. 
after it is dry I trim off the excess and apply pastels to the other side as well. I added some extra latex on top of the wires to make them stand out a little more. I cleaned the area with rubbing alcohol and I tinted the latex with brown acrylic paint. The teeniest, tiniest amount of paint will go a long way. Latex always dries super dark, so don't go overboard with the pigment. Because she's a creative monster doll, she already has holes for wings in place. I add strong two-part epoxy glue to the holes and push the ends of the wire into it. I removed the tape to make sure the glue had good contact with the wire. To make the connection secure, I added some magic sculpt on top. We are going to jump back in time a little bit because I want to show you how I brainstormed ideas for her clothing. I knew I wanted her to have something to cover up a bit, but not actual clothing. I imagined her living alone in some dark forest, so where would she even get any clothes? So I just cut up a piece of fabric into this makeshift vest type of a garment. I added a slit in the back for her wings. I distressed the edges by cutting into them and pulling out some of the fibers. I played around with a scarf idea, kind of like what Mr. Tumnus in the Chronicles of Narnia, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe wears, but decided that it looked too cutesy for her. I also scrapped the idea of doing like a lace top for her. While I was struggling with the outfit, I was scrolling through Pinterest and came across these witch necklaces with a bunch of bones, feathers and other bits and bobs hanging from them. And I was like, yes, that is what I will do. So I rummaged around my drawers and pulled out all the things I thought could work. As the base of the necklace, I used an earring hoop and added all the random pieces to it. I am a weird person and I also happen to have this small jar full of my own baby teeth. Yeah, yeah, super gross, I know, but also kind of cool. So I added those to the mix as well. You can totally make fake teeth out of clay, so don't go pulling out your own teeth for the ultimate spooky aesthetic. But if you have some random teeth laying around, consider putting them to good use. I was in a such time crunch while working on this doll, and it was totally my own fault. I remembered that the deadline for the collab was at the end of October, but instead it was the October 1st. <laughs> I had a little over two weeks to finish the doll. I do think she would have come out a lot nicer if I had more time, because I might have redone some of the things. She 
she definitely admits the spooky season vibes and Halloween is just around the corner, so it's more than fitting. This doll is probably going to be my Halloween doll for this year. I don't have the time to make another one, sadly. But I do have a fall themed doll already done, so that video will be coming out soon, so do subscribe to not miss it. I will leave a link to Kiro's video in the subscription box, so that you can go and see all the other dolls in the collab. I did send my picture to Kiro a little late, so there might be a chance it's not featured in his video. I do hope I made it. Thank you guys so much for watching! Leave this video a like before you go and subscribe if you haven't yet done that. Until next time, bye!